Hi, I'm Dave Warzel, and you're watching PHTV4 Spotlight. Today's Spotlight is on Palos Heights School District 128 and a new initiative they're putting in place, A Portrait of a Learner, which is a great title, by the way. I, I love it, the description it's going to lead to. Um, I visited the website. It was tremendous information here. It seems like a great idea to put forward. And we're going to take a look at what that initiative means. Uh, with us to take a look at that topic, on my immediate right is Assistant Superintendent for the District, Jason Smith, and on his right, Superintendent Merrill Brownlow. Uh, thank you both for being here this morning. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate uh, the opportunity for us to be here to tell our story around no, the portrait. Th this is good. Yeah, we, we definitely want to share this. Um, so the Portrait of a Learner initiative began in 2021, I think, right? They're about putting that process together to uh, organize and construct it. Yes? Yeah, so it began in 2021 where we identified um, community stakeholders as well as school stakeholders to come together to work on this concept. And we're just now in year two of actual implementation of the Portrait of a Learner. D did it get phased in in 2022, or was this the first full year of it? It was phased in last year in 22-23 school year. That's the that was the launch year. Okay. So, I mean, this is kind of exciting. You've, you've kind of dipped your toes in that water, and now it's full swing, and you're going. And so we can talk about the impact of it. Uh, maybe before we do that, can you talk about what was the intent behind, like, why? Why? create this initiative, what right. were you hoping to accomplish with it? So the portrait of a learner really speaks to our job as educators to educate the whole child. We know that beyond academics, our kids need a lot of life skills to navigate our diverse and complex world. And the portrait of a learner is made up of competencies, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that sort of point to what are those life skills that kids really need to develop to successfully navigate their world that's in front of them. And so we believe that this Portrait of a Learner framework gives everyone a common language, a common understanding of what it is we're trying to develop in our kids. You know, that's, it, um, as a former educator myself, it, it's kind of interesting because, I, and I'm sure you're aware and you've heard it, and I think every teacher has, or uh, kids out there at some point are like, well, why do I need to know this? You know, or why is this important to me? And, and dealing with it holistically seems a, a very, very powerful approach to kind of lay a groundwork for, no, this is beyond doing the equation in this class or reading this in this class. This has a, a bigger application. That's 100% true. And I think what we're really proud of with the development of this framework is it really is like a North Star. It can guide our decision making in all areas of our system from human resources to operations and finance to teaching and learning. So when you bring up those different parts to it, that kind of leads to the next question I want to take a look at. Um, if you're going to take a holistic approach, it kind of implies there's other parts to this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about the process to even put the initiative together? Who, who was involved in it? You know, what was the scope of it like? Jason's going to talk a little bit about yeah, the so, and then I'll talk You know, about every school design. district is unique, um, but I think there's always a shared collective aspiration or vision that we all commonly hold. Um, that is all students have an educational experience preparing them to be effective lifelong learners and contributors to society. Our learning experiences must not only provide for the acquisition of rigorous academic content, which we have in District 128, um, but it also must be more intentional about fostering critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creativity, and other 21st century skills our young people need to thrive in this complex, rapidly changing world. So this is where the work of Patel for Kids came in. Patel is the organization that started Portrait that led to the portrait of a graduate. A school system's portrait of a graduate is developed in collaboration with the community to identify 21st century skills, mindsets, and competencies. Um, students need to be prepared for their tomorrow. And that's a phrase we like to say in our district, mm -hmm. that we're trying to prepare students for their tomorrow, whatever that tomorrow may be. Um, it's that life, college, career readiness. The process engages community to develop a collective vision, uh, which serves, as Merrill said, the North Star for system transformation. Um, 21st century learning equips students to transfer knowledge through essential skills and mindsets. When we speak about 21st century uh, learning skills in District 128, we refer to the knowledge, life skills, career skills, habits, and traits that are critically important for student success in today's ever-changing world. And you asked Dave, like, who was involved? And that was the most important part of this process. It wasn't just about students. It takes an entire community to kind of identify mm -hmm. what are those things that we value here in Palos Heights that we know will support our kids. So the design team that came together was 32 members strong, which we're super proud of. Oh. We had a huge level of engagement. 
and it involved staff, administrators, community members, current board members, former board members, alumni, current students. Um, the library, Palos Heights library team came over. The Parks and Rec had representatives on our team, as did Shepherd High School, which is where our kids matriculate for public schools. So we had a lot of people at the table supporting this process of really figuring out what do we want for our kids. You know, that is an incredible, I mean, to pull that group together, I'm sure it had to be a challenge. Um, and, and you, you uh, when you bring that group together and a variety of expertise, and I'm sure, and then you know you're talking about lifelong learners, and that phrasing was part of our, you know, I mm -hmm. taught in District 230 that you know we had that language, um, and then when you think about what the job market is going to look like for these kids, the percentage of jobs that don't even exist, like we don't know what they are yet, or how different the job market looks now compared to what it was 10, 20 years ago, the lifelong learner skill, this more holistic approach seems even that much more critical to develop the skills so that they can be in that environment, right, and succeed in that environment. Um, so I can see where the, all those different perspectives would become so critical. Uh, if you go to the website and check it out, and I did, and I know we're going to share that information now, you have it divided into five uh, parts. Can we talk about what the five parts to the initiative are and then maybe you know, elaborate on, on what that means, how it impacts what will happen in the school? Sure. Uh, the five parts that we're very excited about, and I want to say too with the design team and thank them for their time because it took work to narrow it down to five. Yeah. Right. When you start talking about 21st century skills and competencies that we want all students to embody, to improve, to strengthen as time goes on, I mean, we started probably with 15 to 20, and then you narrow it down further and further. So there was a lot of discussions around deeper learning and um, providing this experience for students in their education. Did so essential skills become part of that conversation? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, like, it, it was a wide range of topics that we talked yeah, about. Were. And I give them, uh, community members, the parents, everyone. The students, um, even. Yeah, I, I just, understanding the clarity of it. Yeah, we can't thank them enough because there was hours of us going through this. But we did finally land on five that we're very, very proud of. Um, and so when we look at our portrait, uh, it's wellness, which is at the bedrock. It's the bottom of our, of our logo. It's the bottom and the foundation of the work that we do. We have communication, we have innovation, we have perseverance, and we have citizenship. And so be, those are the five 21st century skills or those five competencies that as a district we're focusing on. And in that work, we did lead to some common definitions because that was the work that we thought would be very important of how do you have a student understand that maybe is in kindergarten, what is perseverance? What does that mean? Right. What does citizenship mean? Uh, what does it mean to be innovative? You know, is that creative? Is it being curious? Um, and then what is different parts of wellness? Um, and so when we look at it, our definitions for it as a district are uh, wellness is developing healthy minds and bodies. It emphasizes the importance of physical and mental health, encouraging students to develop healthy habits for life. Communication is sharing your ideas in a clear, concise and thoughtful manner, being open to perspectives of others and learning to work collaboratively uh, to accomplish a common goal. Innovation, having curiosity, thinking creatively, taking risks to solve problems in new and different ways, fostering a love of learning. Perseverance, grit, learning to look at failure as an opportunity for growth and learning, maintaining effort and finding ways to work through obstacles and challenges. And citizenship, preparing yourself for a responsible and successful future in a diversified world to become a productive member of your local and global communities. That's a great list. I, and I mean, it, it's a big umbrella. And obviously, I'm going to ask you the, the, you know, the tag question that is, um, I, to me, those concepts are obviously critical to a person succeeding in the world or, or living a fulfilling life, right? How does that translate or impact when we start talking about yeah. curriculum, class, experience? So it translates know. in a lot of ways. And I think what's really important to point out is semantics matter, right? When we developed these, and Jason talked about the team wrestling the terms down to five, which was really challenging, we had to make sure that those five are going to encompass the things that we intend, mm -hmm. right? So that team spent a lot of time discussing semantics before we could get to those five. But with respect to them and how they're incorporated, um, they're really going to come through the teaching strategies that, that the staff are implementing in the classroom, right? When you're thinking about communication, those opportunities 
for students to engage in group project and communicate with one another, be able to share their message about their learning outcome, being able to present, being able to make sure their idea is being understood the way they intended it, right? We talk a lot, a lot about perception, so opportunities for kids to share ideas and exchange ideas and making sure that they're understood. Um, when you think about citizenship, those opportunities in social play. You think about physical education and recess and when they're in unstructured moments, how do they engage with one another? Are they being inclusive? Are they being respectful of one another? Are they representing their own ideas and, and being able at the middle school to engage in civil discourse when they disagree about things? And finding that common ground, saying I agree to disagree and being able to share those perspectives. And also with citizenship, engaging in a community. What are we doing to make our community better? What are we doing to make our schools better? What are we doing to make the world a better place for all of us? So you'll see these things woven in through the projects the kids are engaging in class, the teaching strategies. Um, we talk about innovation and design thinking, giving kids opportunities to really explore different ways to solve problems, not just there's not one way to tackle a problem in a classroom. So that innovation comes in in those kinds of areas, having kids have the freedom to do those things. And then perseverance is an obvious one. <laughs> Don't give up, <laughs> keep going. You know, when kids are struggling with assignments, teachers aren't spoon feeding answers. They're forcing kids to go back and think and reflect and grit it out to get to yeah. their endpoints. Probably one of the most important, I mean, they're all, I don't know that yeah. you could wait any of these more important than the other, but I think about the, the ability to persevere in a challenge, like right. instead of giving up or you right. know, checking out. Um, related to this, and, and you've spoken to it, I, um, does it impact, would you say, like your co-curriculars also? Like, let's yes. say outside the class, some co-curriculars, whether clubs or sports, um, or anything else that's not associated with like the typical classroom curriculum? I think 100%. When you're talking about wellness, first of all, mm -hmm. you know, physical and social emotional wellness, sometimes those clubs or sports are the reason kids are coming to school, right? right. I even think like kids coming to school because they're in band. The kids coming to school because they made the team and that's getting them through the rest of their day. Mm -hmm. So you see that social emotional wellness piece, obviously the physical wellness piece comes into any kind of sporting activity that they're doing that requires that. But I think you're also seeing the communication, you know, those social opportunities that come with extracurricular and athletics that you don't always have as much of during the school day. So that really helps with communication, citizenship, right. and, and then also perseverance. You know, you're, you're engaging in a sport or an activity and you right. run up against a challenge. I think too for us, our, our goal is that we didn't want this to just be a poster on the wall or right. something that just went in a binder. We wanted this to be part of the climate and culture. We wanted this to be a part of our story of who we are in District 128. And so with it, that goes into co-curriculars or extracurriculars, mm -hmm. that goes into our groups or activities. I think it gives some teachers some freedom to be innovative themselves about how can they expand some of these opportunities we're giving to students to tap into maybe their passions and passions that they see in their students. And so the work that we're doing, uh, we do have posters, we have branding, <laughs> we have eight foot murals in our gyms, we um, are putting the words in our hallways because we want students to see it. But even last year we focused on it. We took a competency of the month and we had our staff dive into it to see like, how have you shown perseverance or how have you shown or have students been innovative in your classroom and even have that collective conversation as a staff about how are they growing as well and embodying and incorporating the portrait into their work and then our goal too is with our with our families uh, making videos about how we can support innovation at home how can we support citizenship at home as well and so I think it's gone beyond yeah. even in one year what uh, we were hoping for but it's something we're not done with we're passionate we're excited to be here to share our story but it's how can we continue to live out the portrait each day in our schools. It, it sounds exciting, it sounds energizing, but that doesn't mean to imply it's easy or it's no. you know a, a sunshine, Sally kind of path down the road and everything's okay. I mean, I can imagine there's a lot of challenge that comes in this. The, um, and it, it, even talking about the cues, like you want it to be more than a poster, but there, there, uh, there needs to be cues, there need to be reminders, there need to be revisiting the process or checking in on the process, what's happening with it. Um, and, and I guess that kind of, you're, you're talking to it now and I'd like to, you know, uh, focus maybe to, uh, again on it more tightly on it is, how is it uh, impacting the actual experience in the classroom? So a kid, you know, whether it's English or right. talking about communication or a speech project or something like that. You know, can you speak to that a little bit? You're gonna see much higher levels of engagement 
because I think what's happening is teachers are shifting to do more project-based work. Um, they're integrating more readily their content. Just yesterday, I was in an English classroom, and the science teacher walked in at the middle school, and she said, I found this great new idea. Now here's the teacher being innovative, you know, and there's this idea where we can graph stories and create math graphs through storytelling, and the kids can really apply those skills and communicate their thinking in a different kind of way. Well, right there, that's so representative of the freedom mm -hmm. that this portrait has sort of created uh, among our staff for how they're tackling content with the kids. So I think they're trying to look for ways to really engage the kids at a much higher level. The kids are more active in the learning process with these kinds of strategies. And I think what's most, one of the most important pieces of this whole thing is we have to focus on these competencies as adults. We, don't, we have to make sure we're modeling them. And so I think what you're seeing from our staff is more willingness to take risks with the kids, more willing to um, be vulnerable with the kids and, and navigate that pathway together in that classroom experience. I think too, um, when we first went through this process, originally it was gonna be called the portrait of a graduate. So Patel for Kids, that was the, the initial portrait design. And in one of our last design team meetings, um, we just had a conversation about, well, what about if a student isn't a, if someone isn't a graduate from our schools? Um, and so we've, even the adults, I mean, I didn't graduate from Independence Junior High, but we're all learners. And that's our focus in our district is that you could be a student, you could be a staff member, adult, but we're all here to learn and we're all here to grow. And so we made that shift from portrait of a graduate to portrait of a learner. And then also when we went through the design process, uh, Independence alum Dave Hanley was our graphic designer and we gave him the five competencies and he made our amazing graphic that we're super proud of and without prompting or asking him to he put wellness at the very bottom and Meryl and I have spoke a lot about how that is just such an amazing visual for us that wellness is at the the base of all that we do and so our focus this year of how is it kind of happening in our schools is we have had a big focus this year on wellness and not just on student wellness, but also our, our staff wellness. How can we support our staff? Um, how can we continue to um, you know, provide a, an opportunity for them to grow, to feel supportive? And we do that with morning meetings with our students. We do it in our advisories with our students. But we're intentionally wanting to support the wellness of our staff as well this year. I was going to say, you've touched on so many critical pieces here that I understand how this can be such a valuable structure to work with or framework to work with and talking about the wellness as the foundation I thought about as you're saying I'm thinking well if I'm a student and I'm whether physically or mentally or emotionally not in a well place or a faculty member staff member it doesn't matter can't learn yeah the other <laughs> stuff's probably not going to happen then, right? right correct so, right mm, um, yeah. and I and I do I, I very much like and respect the, the kind of holistic it's not like well I'll work on perseverance and math, but maybe not in English. Well, that's right. not going to, no. Right. You know, right. it, it's not, it's it's not a, a culture thing we building. do. Yes. Exactly. It's not something we do. It's something we are right. and something we want to be about, right? right? So it's an ongoing, when you ask me, like, what's integrated, I'm not going to tell you a particular task. It's the way yeah. we engage. It's the way we behave. It's the way we model. And it's what we ask of our kids. And certainly a, a far more yeah. power, I mean, I think one of the most powerful teaching tools is when the teacher models the behavior they want. Right. The students to adopt. This isn't something yeah. you do and I watch. No, this is something right. I do and we all do. You know? What's been cool is when I interview new staff, when they come to me, everyone comes to me for their final interview. My questions are tell me a time that you were innovative. You yeah. know, tell me how you take care of yourself. You right, know, how, right. do you, how do you make sure you're ready to be with students? You know, yeah. what do you do for yourself? You know, yeah, the, the work yeah, of the portrait great. should drive all those decisions, as Meryl just said. It's, yeah. It drives our hiring, it, just dri it drives. Um, some budget New hires pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> it drives even you know the the resources that we're allocating for our budget. It it drives you know learning spaces. Right now we're redesigning a, our LRC or library at Navajo to be an innovative space for students to you know foster a love for reading or learning and just be creative. Uh, it's it's developed our STEM at elementary. This is our year two of having a STEM program for our elementary students, and so this work is really driving. A lot of the decisions that we make mm -hmm. you know, globally or at a district level, and then it really kind of narrows down into the work of our students. And I don't know if you just recently saw Chippewa's Playground was on the front page of the paper for it. it mm -hmm. We just did a ribbon cutting, and it won. Um, it was designated as a national demonstration site wow. for inclusivity. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> super excited about that. Yeah. For inclusivity. And the reason that it, I think, resonated at that level was the kids designed it. 
The kids chose those playground elements. The kids wanted spaces where they could collaborate, communicate, engage with one another, and be innovative even on the playground. There's music elements. They wanted to make sure their friend in the wheelchair could get up and access more than just a swing. Mm -hmm. And so the, the things, the elements the students chose to be a part of that playground are representative of what we're hoping for in that portrait, yeah. right? And that was such a beautiful illustration of how when you are really focused on these kinds of things with kids, the results that can come from it. Right, right? and what a powerful experience for them yeah. because then they can see the result of their right. input and their right. passion or their, their own innovation in that and, area. And right. it benefits the whole community because yeah. it's there for community use when school's not in session and now it's a national demonstration site that's gonna give Palos Heights recognition for right. the work that the kids did. So no, that, that certainly is exciting. And yeah, I, I, I can see all the, all the uh, areas this, this can reach into that uh, can have such tremendous positive impact here. Um, and and uh, Jason, I think you started to speak to a little bit because my next question is what is the future of it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I know, especially as you said, you have to revisit yeah. these things. Um, you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna wanna reevaluate it at some point and there's always an element of you know, tweaking or adjusting, I'm guessing. What does the future look like of Portrait so we're of doing a Learner? A, we still have a few more steps ahead. Like we said, mm -hmm. we're only in year two of our implementation. So what we're really hoping to do is in this next year, create like a district dashboard where we can have visible on the website, mm -hmm. looking at measures as, of how we're examining our success and making sure that we're supporting the work with the students. So we have a group working on developing those dashboard indicators and that'll be very visible for the community to take a look at. We're also looking at at, we talked about um, the learning experience earlier with looking at some project-based learning pieces where kids are going to do showcases to showcase projects they're proud of and at the same time demonstrate those skills in their presentations of those final products and then lastly we're also looking at that framework I think I mentioned it earlier to drive our um, board of education goal setting strategic goal setting so that's something we're going to we have a small group working on as well to bring forward some recommendations to our board of education around strategic goal setting um, we're a district that's growing and we're growing rapidly um, and so we, we're, right, we're right. going to have to be innovative and persevere through, you know, <laughs> what that means for the district because um, we're so excited that we're that attractive, but it also obviously brings some challenges with it when you're growing that quickly. So we're excited about how the portrait might inform some of that work. And I also think, community, this is a chance for you to connect with us. We'd really like to see our wider community that doesn't have students in our schools embracing these same competencies and thinking about how they're modeling in the community for our kids, because our kids are out there engaging with people every day. And so we're hoping that from a wider Palos Heights lens that everyone can kind of embrace this work with us. And yeah. that's a huge part of our Critical future. Piece. And I would say too with the community, that's a great point, is we hope that this is uh, aligns with our community's aspirations and vision and you know goals or traits for our students. And also continue to foster the re relationships that we have with Parks and Rec, and the with the public library. Um, even when we have students from Trinity Christian College coming in to do observations or to student teach that they're now exposed to 21st century learning or what a portrait of a learner looks like. So when they're being prepared to be future educators, they can take that with them. Yeah. So, I, I was gonna say, like listening, the description of this initiative and, and listening to your examples of impacts within the school and with the staff, I'm thinking, I think I'd like to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> As a student this time though, I'd like to experience education this way. I mean, it sounds exciting. You know, Dave, you mentioned earlier, you know, about how we don't know the jobs that students are gonna have for their future mm -hmm. and we, really hope that our portrait of a learner is equipping students with the skills, the necessary skills that they'll need. And um, you maybe have heard of a quote that I like to, I want to read it. The quote by Richard Riley, who was former Secretary of Education for President Clinton. And we shared this at one of our first initial uh, launches when we were going to launch this initiative. Mm -hmm. And he said, we are currently preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist, using technologies that haven't been invented in order to solve problems we don't even know are problems yet. Yeah. And so I think that goes with that. Scary. It right. does. Yeah. I think it goes with that question of if we don't know their future occupation, we don't know what future problems they're going to solve. But Meryl and I and our staff and I think our community can all lean into. We believe that our students will need to persevere to be great citizens and effective citizens, to be innovative, creative, curious, you know, to be aware of wellness, and then also just be effective communicators. How do they share their thoughts and ideas? So the future is unknown, but as we said, and I said it earlier, we're trying to prepare them for their tomorrow uh, the best that we can. 
It, it sounds like when you when you encapsulate it that way and, to, and like you said, kind of boil it down to those five, right? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good toolbox to take in in the future. Yeah. You know? yeah. We think so. <laughs> <laughs> and like we said, semantics matter to get it, you know, yeah. I think the five we chose do a good job of representing. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it, to me, it looks good. I know we talked, you know, back in the summer. Um, I hope I get an opportunity to visit. I would love we to would love see it. how some of these things, you know, are, look within the school. Uh, I would love to be able to get in the community and talk about the impact for the community because obviously it's a huge plus, you know. We would love that. We, would, we, we encourage anyone to come and visit <laughs> and kind of check out the work that we're doing because we're really proud of the work that we're doing with our kids. And like I said, I think we still obviously have high expectations for academics um, and that doesn't get lost in any of this work. I think that's an important thing to say. Like right. we're not throwing the academics out the door. We're just enhancing that academic experience. I, saying, I know there's research in other areas, not specifically this one because this one is so new, but where they've shown that the academics tend to follow this stuff very, very naturally, where you, instead of the very uh, focused, like, test prep type yeah. thing, you know. When you kids know, enjoy school, they do better. They do better, for sure. Um, thank you very much for coming in. Thank uh, you, This Dave. is exciting. I, I do look forward to a follow-up on this. Uh, I, it sounds like a great experience for the, the students, the faculty, and the community at large. Thank, well, you, thank you for the opportunity, and we hope we can continue the conversation around these competencies and dig in a bit Good. more in the future. Yeah. So, we'll thank work you. on our own innovation communication. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's right. Thank All you. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming in. I'm Dave Wurzel, and you've been watching PHTV4 Spotlight. Today's Spotlight has been on the portrait of a learner at Palos Heights School District 128. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.